Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. Here in studio once again is the Mayor of our city. It's always great to have Anthony Mizzetich here. Liz, it's wonderful to be here. I have enjoyed being here all year, and I guess... Uh, Where did the time go? Time? Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is, what, <laughs> the last one of the year? This is the last one while well, you're still officially mayor, because, Correct. of course, at the December 4th meeting, um, next Tuesday, you will have the official... A reorganization. Reorganization, yes. the changing of the guards, which happens. Um, but we've had a great year every month updating our residents about the things happening at the city, so we're going to continue to do that. And because you're on the council, you come in here anytime you want and keep us posted, too. So well, you're not I'll, going too far. I'll take you up on that invitation. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, well, let's get down to business. The last meeting that you had, um, a big issue that you all addressed as a council was to, I guess, put to rest the controversy over the city's uh, beautification grant program. Just for starters, let's just help bring everyone up to speed. Explain exactly what the beautification grant program was and why it had to change. Well, in a brief, uh, the program's been around for uh, about 20 years now, and it was um, monies that were collected on recycling, recycling monies that were, uh, residents would use the money, I mean, would uh, have their recycling trash right. can, and then that um, recycled material would be taken, and then uh, monies were given back to, to the city. And so that program had a grant program where um, uh, HOAs basically could apply t to the city for grants for beautification of their entrances and that kind of thing. Um, and so the city had a grant program for, for all, many, many years. And again, it would use the money from, that was given by our waste haulers that they would give mm -hmm. back to the Correct. city. Correct. Again, incentive to everybody to recycle. It, it was an incentive for everyone to recycle. Right. Right. So I think we collected about three hundred thousand dollars, or up to that, a year as much from that. Yeah, but, but about that approximately. Yeah. But maybe not when it started twenty years ago. Oh, Eventually, no, it no, built up no. to that. Kind and of it was actually was you know was uh, kind of a help to incentivize residents to to recycle. Uh, then they could go ahead and apply to the city for a grant and help beautify their. Uh, their resident, their right. not their residents, but their homeowners association entrances. So initially, when you say that HOAs, the homeowner associations in the city, they were the ones that came forward for the grants. It wasn't like an individual resident could come say, "Okay, no, like no, no, it was to put some gardening in." It was typically homeowner associations. Right. Yeah. So they were doing okay, it all not. It was a hundred percent homeowner associations, but it was typically homeowner associations. Okay. So all these started uh, back in '89, I think, and then in 2008. Mm -hmm there was sort of a shift because they were concerned about is this program equitable the way money was distributed is that right well there was there was the council at the time was concerned about uh, certain HOAs uh, maybe going to the well uh, more more often than they uh, uh, than others and there remember the city doesn't have complete HOA associations there are some residents that are right. not in HOAs right so they wanted to look at it and say, how can we do this more equitably? Right. I think yeah. I remember reading at the time when the, then it was Councilman Long was on, said mm -hmm. that about one-third of the yeah. residents. Yeah, and, and, and Councilman know, Long doesn't live in an HOA. Right, so I think but that's why I think they said that maybe one-third of the city yeah. residents aren't in an HOA, so they were yeah. then sort of not discriminated against, but they didn't have the same access to the funds. Correct. So that sort of made the, what, the staff and everyone take a look at the program? They, they took a look at the program, and I think the argument also um, at the time was that uh, it wasn't completely equitable to all the residents in the city, and also they wanted to make sure that what was used was of a public benefit. Uh, the funds that were used, if it was a beautification of an entrance of a um, HOA rather than maybe, you know, somewhere deep inside the right. HOA complex where the public couldn't get any benefit. So also, was there to the issue, too, in terms of legally, was, I think there were some changes at the state in terms of requirements? That's, that's what we're talking about. The, uh, right, you in know, terms of distributing public as far, funds. As far as the public funds issue, yeah. I mean, the, the uh, criteria that um, our city attorney, for instance, you know, advised was that having the grant monies go for a project that was in full public view, therefore it had a public benefit. Okay. And, that, and that, those are usually at the entrance of, of HOA uh, uh, 
associations. So then in 2008, the program was somewhat suspended. Now we flash to 2012 in the beginning, in January, mm -hmm. your council made a decision to what? Get the program going again or look into yes, how the program was Yes, uh, to look into uh, getting the program um, going and looking at the issues that were we had to deal with with implementing the program. And so um, we had two members of the uh, uh, committee, subcommittee, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Campbell and uh, Councilwoman Brooks were on the subcommittee. They had different philosophies on which way uh, the program should go. And so uh, at the last council meeting, it came to the council so the council could take a look at it amongst the five of us. And um, you know, one of the options uh, presented by staff was to basically uh, have the program cease and then, then return all the funds back to the uh, to the residents. So every residents, every resident who was uh, you know getting their trash picked up, that kind of thing, would get a refund back from the city. So, then so you, that, that's more equitable. Right. So there were four options I know put forward in terms Correct. of how to work with the program. So that one that you selected, option three. It was a unanimous vote. To it was a unanimous that. vote. Yes. So it, it technically, it stops the program as it exists. It's no longer. Correct. But there will be every individual, like you say, that um, pays into the system, um, into the trash hauling system. Right. They will then get a check, a rebate back, and then they can, as a group, come together and say, "Let's put the money towards fixing up this in our neighborhood." That's correct. They can come together as a group, and. Uh, maybe match it or however they wanted to right. work it within their own homeowners association to come up with a project for their homeowners association. Now I know, so you have EDCO that I think was contributing about $200,000 reimbursing and then there was um, Universal Waste Services that were giving I think an additional 16000 I read. But of that money, a good percentage went directly to the city, right, to deal with media. And so that money will still exist. You're talking about the... Oh, no, no, that's all going all to go, of that's going all gonna go back I to the residents. So all the money that, were, that was collected in that program is we'll going go. to go back to you. the residents. So the, then, rent of, the residents will get the money returned So when to it them. comes to medians in the city to continue making our medians improve, then that would just come from capital improvements or wherever? That We're going to have to go ahead and do that through our capital improvement program. So I know that this issue created a lot of debate and concern. Yes. Do you feel when you left that council meeting that it was a good resolution and, and everybody is, is okay with what the outcome I was? Think, I think it was the best solution that we could come up with. I know that... Uh, both uh, Mayor Pro Tem Campbell had his strong feelings. I know that Councilwoman Brooks had her f strong feelings. Uh, but in the end, they agreed. They picked the same option. Of course, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I, for something that was, and I said this at the council meeting, for something that was so contentious that we were able to find consensus. That's nice. Yes. We can all agree to disagree, and it's yeah. nice when you can have a meeting of the minds. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and we all got to watch it on our PV TV right. during your council right. meeting. Um, at that same meeting, at the very end of the meeting, another issue that's come up a lot, there's been discussion always about having more transparency mm -hmm. at City Hall and all of government. We all want that. And one thing that had come up a lot was continuous conversations about upper staff, what, they, what their salaries are, what their compensation is. There's been questions and concerns, and you have a solution now that you suggested. Let's just put it out there, and you, put it on, you want to put it on the agenda. To yes, yes. I, I put forth an item. Um, well, first, let's step back. Okay. I, one of the things that we wanted to do this year that I took the time with the city manager um, when we were up in uh, we were up in Sacramento during uh, January was to go to the state controller's office and have them vet our website as far as information that we needed to have on the website of what our our uh, employees were compensated. The state controller's office did take a look at our website and issued a letter that our website was in full compliance with their requirements. Uh, of the state controller's office for that disclosure of information and for transparency. Um, there are those in our community and some on the council who want to take that further, and I have no problem with that. Um, my proposal to put this item on the agenda was my uh, interest in trying to find a solution for you know that concern, and so what I'm uh, going to do is go back through my files, my personal files, when I was in the private sector. What I, what I used to get, Liz, and what I was talking about, and Councilman uh, Dehovic mentioned that he would like to help me with this, so I'm looking forward to working with him on it, is a uh, 
I used to get from my HR department a total compensation of what I would get on an annual basis at my company. It was a, you know, if there was a salary, it was a salary, uh, if there was a bonus eligible and, you know, what that was worth, uh, if uh, I had vacation time, you know, uh, if I had, you know, uh, any medical or anything okay. like that. I mean, it, it, would, it, would, it, would, it would itemize package. everything so it spells out, and in case anyone's ever asks, you know, what is this employee paid or what are they compensated? It's a total compensation, and we can put that on the website, and that will further uh, give further information in, you know, in regards to transparency of what everyone is, is compensated totally. And so I, I want to go ahead and help be a, you know, a person that's working for a solution to those who are concerned about transparency. So uh, in, in a best case scenario, when do you think then that information will be available on the website that people can see the entire compensation of upper management? Well, it's going to be available next year. It's okay. something that, you know, I'll be working on since Another uh, I, I won't be a mayor, but I'll still be on the council. So it's, it's, right. it's something that I'll be working on with uh, uh, Jerry, who, you know, wanted to work on it with me. And so I will present that to the council and uh, say, you know, here it is. And uh, then put that out on the, on the website. Well, we appreciate all you're doing. Yeah. As we always remind the viewers that everybody on the council, it's technically a volunteer job. You are um, out there with your own full-time work and then to take on projects like this. But let's kind of take a look through the year since you have been mayor. A lot of goals that the city put forward since you've been on council and you're working towards many of them. Um, just number one, what would probably in your mind be for you personally at least the biggest accomplishment you saw take place in 2012 for the city of RPV? Well, I think you know, there's a whole bunch of goals, uh, Liz, that I think we were able to, to work on. And I think it starts with the fact that our council came up with 10 goals for us this year and as a new council to have a roadmap, in other words, to, we, that we can move forward and to benefit our residents. And so just the establishment of the right. 10 goals, I think, was important. And, we, you know, we had some team building uh, sessions on that and goal setting sessions on that that helped establish those those goals. I think, you know, uh, San Ramon Canyon is one of our, you know, you know, our top goals. I made a trip to Washington, D.C. as um, I reported on this uh, program earlier this year in search of uh, getting Tiger Grant funds, Tiger Four Grant funds uh, for San Ramon. Um, I know that the, uh, and we, we weren't able to do that because the Tiger Grant funds were, were very competitive. Um, I know that Councilwoman Brooks and Councilman Knight, who are on the subcommittee, were very involved in talking to Don Kanabi about funding, talking to Joe Buscayano. This is a $20 million project. This is a $20 million project. And we have, you know, um, basically half the funding in a state grant. And so that was another portion that our team was working on. I'm, you know, it was, it was a kind of a, it was a team effort. Um, we had many, uh, well, I want to say at least two to three meetings, council meetings that involved San Ramon, at least, that where we talked about issues on San Ramon, whether it was um, uh, funding for San Ramon, whether it was, um, you know, the issue of, uh, you know, what the project is going to entail in San Ramon. We are currently awaiting the final approval from the Army Corps of Engineers, and that is coming very shortly. Right. I think yeah. ideally, I remember when I was talking with Public Works folks, they were thinking, wouldn't it be great that the project could have been started up this fall before the rain set? As a matter of fact, today, it was well, a rainy day today, and... The hang-up has been the Army Corps of Engineers mm -hmm. and getting their final approval. Uh, they had a, uh, a uh, shift, a switch, I should say, in their uh, personnel. And so a new personnel came in. They had to get familiar with the situation. And they're the ones who have to give us the final approval. And so, uh, in fact, I'm, I talked to the individual today about getting that final approval. And he told me it is forthcoming. Great. Yes. So maybe we'll see some groundbreaking, not ground shaking yes. after the new year on that yes. one. <laughs> yes. And just hope that Mother Nature's kind with the rains. I mean, I automatically today when the rains were hitting and I had to drive PV Drive South, I thought, 
wow, am I going to see, you know, the dirt and the mud coming down onto 25th yeah, Street? Yeah, we want to. Go, the, the timeline that we would like to move forward on is getting um, the construction going on uh, in February. Great. Okay, that is what our goal is uh, to do, and that gives us enough time to get the project completed, barring any, uh, you know, challenges that we have to get it done by October of 2000. Uh, 2014, which is the mandate by the state grant. Okay. Yeah. So, in terms of just goals that you've had as the city this year, you'd say that was the biggest one you've made. That, that's huge a big. That's progress. a big one. The the other one was, um, you know, our our number one goal was was crime prevention and crime reduction. Now, again, RPV is not a big crime city, but it was an uh, an issue that uh, Councilwoman Brooks and myself uh, wanted to address this year and. Uh, you know, through our efforts on the uh, Regional Law Enforcement uh, Committee here on the peninsula, that we're both uh, delegates from, for the, our city. And with city staff, we were able to come up with a program that involved uh, Captain Bolin at the Sheriff's Department, where we were able to put uh, an additional um, deputy into the city. We were able to get um, volunteers into the city uh, I think it was 1,920 hours worth of volunteers uh, to patrol our city at no cost mm -hmm. to our residents, no cost. And that's, that's huge because, right. you know, a, a regular traffic <laughs> deputy, you know, if we were to bring in a regular traffic deputy, it's, the cost is like $225,000. But you saw the numbers, the numbers shift with, was it? But then that's the point I'm getting to uh, is that with all those things that we're able to do, our, our, um, Burglary rates have dropped by fifty percent, and that's huge. Right. That that's really huge, um, and it's be, it happened directly after we implemented this program in July first. And so, you know, I, I want to thank the council for being supportive in this, and you know, recognizing that this was one of our number one goals. And so we we move forward. And on. we have such a responsive community. They're very vigilant yeah. with all the neighborhood watch groups. Yes. and especially now that's with the, the holidays, other side of the coin too. That, that I, I need to mention it. is neighborhood watch. You know, we could have all these patrol deputies out there, but with neighborhood watch out there as well, um, you know, we're, we're going to have a very very safe city if 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 we're doing what uh, we can, what the the sheriff's department is doing, what they can for us, and our own neighbors are out there watching uh, each other. Right. You know, not watching each other, but watching for out for each other. Certainly living in RPV, we sort of have the quality of life here. We're all very blessed, and we are in a good position. One of the things that you obviously are very concerned always is the fiscal situation here with the economy the way it's been. Give us a report card, year 2012, how RPV is ranking in terms of just being financially sound and in a good place. Well, our, our city is in, in good financial uh, shape. Uh, we have a very strong uh, reserve. I think uh, we're going to be strong both in uh, our general fund reserve, especially, and then also uh, our our uh, capital improvement fund reserve is very, very strong. And we have, you know, uh, uh, our TOT taxes goes into our general fund and then into the CIP reserve. And so we're getting about $3 million to $3.5 million a year coming in through our, just through our TOT tax. Which is into transient our occupancy tax. Transient program. occupancy tax into our, um, our CIP fund. And so that's huge. That's a huge increase in that fund. And, you know, we have to, uh, you know, compliment our Terranea, who's done so well here in Rancho Palos Verdes and, you know, has contributed almost $10 million to our, since they, our, opened, their since they opened their doors. And, t and transit occupancy tax. All right. So Since you were re re uh, referencing Terranea, they had so many neat things going on down there during the holidays, and what a, and what a jewel to have them here. Yeah, it, they are uh, truly a uh, well-run or, uh, organization. They're in a beautiful spot. They're doing very well, which, you know, we're all very pleased about. And, uh, you know, they are uh, a, a good destination that uh, people – nationally and now internationally are, are coming to. Mm -hmm. And it's great that we have that tax. In fact, I had um, in the studio just recently our newly, because uh, he's been appointed to the district, Senator Ted Lou, who will be now handling our state senate district, 
And I asked him that question about the TOT, how important it is for local control, because sometimes in Sacramento, you think, would they ever shift that? Would they ever That's what well, we've been it? concerned. Yeah. We've always been concerned and, about that. Um, so. so what he said, he absolutely, you know, promised that that would stay, remain local as long as, you know, so we'll, that's really, really important. And we rely on that money now, I'm sure, to, um, and since we're talking about Terranea on the coast, I'd love to maybe move down the road um, to our another, one of our other jewels on the coast, which would be Trump's. Yes. And what a change and shift in terms of what's happened with Trump in this city. There's, you know, everybody knew there was sort of this kind of, I don't know what I want to call it. I want to say a cloud, but it seems like, because <laughs> <laughs> it's rainy out, maybe that's why the word's coming well, to mind at the moment. But you know, I, I think it, things, it seems like the skies have brightened. Over yes, everything. yes. And I think we, we came to a resolution on the lawsuit that we had with uh, Trump. Uh, we came to resolution uh, on that mid-year. And so I think he, uh, the Trump organization is pleased. I think the city is pleased that we're not spending any more money and that we can uh, move on, mm -hmm. move on and have and build upon a better relationship. And I think that's really important because, uh, because Trump is a major landowner in the city. And, uh, they and have a major a employer. A major employer. They have a beautiful property. And uh, I think it's it's important that we uh, have good relationships. And now when residents approach it, they know they're driving down Trump National Drive. And that was another big yes. change that I know the organization yes. there wanted to see that name for a that long was, time. Yeah, and that was part of the settlement. And, and, and well, that was really was the settlement, was right. uh, having that name change. And so uh, we don't have to spend any more money on, on legal issues. They don't either. And like I said, we can work on building a better relationship. And we thought... Uh, that would be the best way to go about it. And since you just mentioned the word building, I'm going to segue over to something that has been built since you were mayor, and it's right here next to RPV TV studio, and that is a dog park in the city, which a uh, temporary dog park called Rancho Caninos Park. So yes. talk, that's, you know. Well, I, you know, that, that came out of the uh, uh, debate about the, the, the dog beach. And, you know, we tried the, the dog beach this year, uh, there were environmental concerns, there were safety concerns, so it didn't, it didn't work out. Um, so we searched for other uh, alternatives and solutions to people who wanted to have, a, you know, take their pets and, and let them exercise and uh, have a kind of a park type area. And so here, right here on the, uh, the City Civic Center, we uh, created a new, uh, it's temporary dog park, but it's a half acre park for uh, large dogs and big dog, uh, small dogs, and uh, it's, it's segregated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the feedback that we're getting is very, very positive. And uh, some residents have made some suggestions to make right. it even better. And so we're, we're going to take, uh, take a look at those and Right. That. I know that it's self-regulated. I mean, the rules are all there, but I understand people that bring their dogs, they all understand mm -hmm. that, you know, you can't bring an aggressive dog to a park like that. No. No, because then it just right. it sours everything. Exactly. Yeah. So that that's exciting. It definitely met a need that the community had been talking yes. about, and that's really yes. And and so we we were able to meet that need. Uh, the residents, like I said, are very uh, pleased that are using it. But that we're not stopping there. We're still pursuing the uh, the larger dog park the in conjunction would. in conjunction with the other cities at the county uh, former landfill. And so uh, hopefully we can get something opened up there maybe next year. And so the residents will have their choice. You've been on the council for three years. So the shift when you're, you know, as a city council member, again, you're, everyone's a volunteer, and then you shift over to mayor. Just that, what was that like for you? And, I mean, you're out there, obviously, at, as a spokesperson for the city. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, uh, I, I, I want to thank my colleagues for giving me the opportunity. It's, it's an honor to be mayor of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. I, uh, I grew up in the city, and to at that you know when I was growing up, I never thought I'd be the mayor of the, of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. I mm -hmm. never thought I'd be you know uh, in that position, and so it has been an honor. It's been uh, rewarding, and it's been challenging, uh, just like most things in life. Mm -hmm. But um, what inspired you to get involved with public service and to, to do this? You know, Liz, I always... Your wife keeps asking you that, no? No, well, no. She's, <laughs> she's asking me, have you done enough, no. you know? Um, she, uh, no, I've always had that uh, desire to give back to in public service, whether it's been in a uh, um, 
in a social club, whether it was in, in my community, I've always had a desire to give back. And, uh, you know, I, I admire people who, who volunteer in the community, who, um, who uh, do things on behalf of others. And so I, it's just something that I wanted to do. Right. Yeah. And as you mentioned, you've, you volunteer and you get involved with the clubs. I have to let everybody know to stay tuned because one of the clubs the mayor is past president of is the Dalmatian American Club in San Pedro. Talk about another jewel that we have in our community, and everyone's welcome to go there. It has a long history, so we're doing a really fun uh, show on that, and we met, caught up with you there, and your wife's the manager. Um, but that's a very special place, and a lot of Peninsula residents belong there as it well. Is, it is a uh, special place. You're right. A lot of Peninsula residents do, uh, uh, do belong to the club. It has uh, some very famous traditions that have been going on for many years. And I, the, uh, the show segment that you're going to be doing is on the Fish Luncheon. Right. And the Fish Luncheon is, is well known throughout Los Angeles as a network. Maybe around luncheon. the country. <laughs> uh, I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. But, you know, you usually have uh, between um, 200 to 300 people attend that event. It's served, uh, the, the meal is served family style. The meal is swordfish, fish luncheon. Yeah. Um, uh, mustacholi, uh, you don't leave chowder hungry. and you know I mean you don't leave hungry I mean if you leave hungry it's your own fault right no yeah. it's one of those places but when you say it's bi-monthly and uh, they do it twice every two months they do it it's January March May July September and November and business people call it a lot, lot of people a lot of holding, political folks a lot there. of political folks end up going to the fish luncheon networking uh, getting recognized uh, it's very interesting during uh, election season. Right. <laughs> There's a lot of public officials there. Yeah, so we'll have, it's, it's going to be a really fun segment. I, nothing like tradition, especially at the holiday time. Yeah. You must, and one thing we were, as I was talking about that was in terms of tradition, just today you said you were making a, a traditional Croatian pizza yes. to bring to the club for a big party. What well, well, w uh, the club tomorrow will be celebrating the 67th Komiška Noć. And so our viewers watching, not to get confused, that's and no, to, to no explain no that December first, right? December first, and to explain that uh, the club was founded with many um, uh, immigrants from the town of Komija in Croatia, and so they celebrate the the um, feast of the patron saint, which is um, Saint Nicholas, mm -hmm. uh, known in Croatian as Sveti Mikola, and uh, they have a big celebration that is uh, done every. December, beginning of December, and it, at the club they traditionally have it the first Saturday in December, and so the meal is a big, a big deal. I mean, it's uh, it's always a big deal when you're with Croatians eating. I know I yeah, married yeah. one. It's yeah. always about the food. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was making today is the uh, traditional um, appetizer for the, the beginning of the meal, and it's basically a uh, anchovy pizza. And so I've, I've done this for three years now. I've been working with some, uh, uh, you know, real fine Croatian uh, gentlemen who are almost in their, well, some of them are in their 90s, and they've been teaching me how to make this. And so I've, I, I was mixing the flour today. I was putting in the ingredients. I was putting the anchovies on there. And it's about, a, it's about a, putting it in the oven. Uh, it's about a six-hour process so to make this. And this meal that we make, the, the um, appetizer will serve 150 people. Wow, maybe we'll have to people email you for the recipe. Sounds yummy. Yeah, it's a secret. I know. I know <laughs> no. I'm sure your kids are saying, Dad, hold the anchovy. Yeah, yeah. Um, believe it or not, we have just a few minutes left to wrap this up. As we head into uh, 2013, you still have lots of big plans, even yes. though you'll continue being a council member. In fact, this will be during your fourth year, and Correct. then we hear you're going to run again, which will be yes. terrific yeah. to serve yet a second term on the council. So that will be coming up. So you're, hopefully you'll be staying around for a while. But uh, just quickly, there's things that you really want to see focus starting in the new year for the council. What would be, you know, on your wish list? Well, uh, you know, I uh, have a couple items that I'm bringing forth on the agenda. Uh, one of them is emer regional emergency preparedness. This is for, you know, a, a, a dramatic natural uh, disaster that mm -hmm. occurs and that, you know, our peninsula gets basically, uh, basically becomes an island onto itself. And how do we go ahead and survive for those several days till we get help and that kind of thing? And that's working with the other cities as well to come to, 
come up with a plan on how do we do address yeah, that. Pool resources I mean, you know, you look you look at Sandy, you look at Katrina, you know, you you look at the, you know the tsunami in Japan. I mean, those are those are big disasters, and you know, I think a lot of resources get will get stretched, and so. My concern is for our residents and the, and the residents of the peninsula, how do we go ahead and have a plan so we can uh, address, you know, something of that kind of challenge. Okay. Uh, the other thing I was bringing forth is that um, uh, I want to bring back the equestrian committee. We have several uh, residents that own horses, and I was approached um, a while back about, you know, can we have a, you know, can we bring back the equestrian committee and can we, you know, we, we have issues with horses and we, you know, we want to be heard. We're part of the community. So uh, we're going to bring that back. Um, so those are some, some of the things that I'll be working on. And uh, amongst others, we have that, that transparency, uh, the, um, the issue on the full compensation to the employees. That's the other thing I'll be working on. So, um, that, amongst other things, San Ramon Canyon, I'll still stay involved with that and all the other things that I'm working on, I'll just continue to work on for, the, for our residents. So your New Year's resolution is San Ramon Cam Canyon will be fixed. We'll get there. Yeah, At least we'll, it'll, it'll be started. Good job. Yeah. Well, happy holidays to you and your family. And uh, Liz, I want to you know, uh, wish our residents happy holidays. I hope you have happy, safe holidays filled with a lot of uh, love and uh, affection for your families and friends. Um, I want to thank you. I want to thank Mark Dottie and uh, Maria for uh, these programs this year and inviting me here. And uh, well, it's, it's here. very much, uh, you know, I feel very welcome here and, and enjoy, you know, doing this with we you guys. We appreciate all you're doing and you keep coming back. And one more thing, how would you say happy holidays in Croatia? Is there a... Well, you Happy would, New Year. Well, you well you would say Christmas, for instance, Sretan Bozic, and uh, Happy New Year is Sretna Nova Godina. Okay, I'm not going to do that one. I'll just say Dobro. Good. Okay, <laughs> Dobro. <laughs> thank you for being here, Mayor, and we'll uh, see you at the next council meeting. Liz, thank you very much. All right, that'll do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Happy holidays, everybody.